Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. This episode is named Coin Fund, Blockchain for Social Impact and How to Start a Career. And today's guest is Vanessa. She is the head of portfolio growth at Coin Fund. She has 20 years of expertise in the financial services and tech industry. At Coin Fund, Vanessa is playing a leading role in helping Coin Fund and its portfolio companies bridge the gap between the worlds of traditional companies and decentralized networks, from early stage development to growth at scale. She is focusing on helping founders build world class teams, protocols, applications, and network governance, forming alliances within the Coin Fund portfolio companies as well as cross other blockchain projects and protocols. And this episode is so interesting to me, and I believe it will be the same to you, is not only because we talk about how she and everybody should spend their time consciously and delegate their task, and also super interesting for me to ask her questions such as, Coin Fund 83 million funds, what kind of companies and projects they would like to invest? Right. And it's super interesting that to get more insight on how they are helping them to achieve product market fits and execute in such a quick and perfect way. And also we talk about how to gain and establish more strategic partnerships. And also anyone here who have advice or tips on how to establish more strategic partnerships, feel free to comment down below. And also we talk about what makes people creative and innovate. So much good content in this episode. Also, this is something I must mention. Prior to joining CoinFund, she was an executive director at Consensus, where she focused on driving adoption for Ethereum, strategic initiatives, alliances, and channels. She was involved in setting up the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, EEA, and she also sits on the board of the Accounting Blockchain Coalition, ABC, and she is a president of Blockchain for Social Impact Coalition. And prior to joining Consensus, she was a strategy executive at New York Stock Exchange and a key member of PwC's global wealth management team. Vanessa is a founding board member of AABC, focused on blockchain and art. She sits on the advisory council of Consensus and the Resolution Project. She is a Macon Institute associate and contributed to the World Economic Forum Digital Future Council. She also graduated cum laude from law school and business school in Paris. So with all that said, now you understand a little bit more about how excited I am and we all should be to have Vanessa be on the podcast. And let's begin the future hour. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of The Future Hour. Today, we're so honored and so thrilled to have the head of portfolio growth from CoinFund, Vanessa Grillet, to be on the podcast. Thank you so much. Hi, pleasure is mine. I'm really happy to be here. I would like to start the podcast and dive in the questions with the part one I named hero's journey so we'd like to begin by asking this question what are you building at coin fund and who are you building it for sure um so coin fund is a multi-strategy fund that invests in and that invests uh, across web3 projects and entrepreneurs so coin fund started off as an early stage vc fund way back in 2015 uh, when Jay Brookman uh, founded the firm and really, you know, coming from the tech side, really investing in amazing founders and entrepreneurs and supporting them through the life cycles of crypto, the ups and downs. And um, more recently, um, Coin Fund also added a liquid investment strategy led by Seth Gins. And um, here we invest with the big liquid names that are available, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Solana, or other projects. Um, and we're excited also to continue supporting, you know, all these big projects throughout their life cycle. Um, we are also launching a vehicle that is focused on NFTs. Coin Fund was one of the earliest investors in NFT projects, investing in projects like Dapper and Rarible. Uh, NFTFI. And so basically, our role is to invest in the creative 
uh, power of the founders. And so we're really building this for them. Um, in my role as Portfolio Growth, I'm here to help them scale and grow um, and make their projects successful. So we're really there for them. And uh, we want to drive the adoption of Web3. So by investing in these amazing companies, um, we're basically fostering the new economy and we're enabling people to unlock the benefits of Web3, <clears throat> which are decentralization, you know, fair access, uh, financial inclusion. And so really we're serving the entire, you know, consumers and developers uh, ecosystem. That sounds absolutely amazing. And I think it's super, super important that big names such as you are and people from your team, as you mentioned, um, the founder and the head of liquid investments, Seth, um, you all are super, super dedicated your time and the resources into building something or supporting uh, those projects that will dive and drive early mainstream adoption. I think that's super interesting. And I will come back later to ask uh, you more questions about the 83 million venture fund from uh, Coin Fund. But before that, more question about Vanessa yourself, right? So what is your vision and what change you personally, personally are hoping to make in this world? So I, you know, I joined um, Consensus almost five years ago. So coming into the space, not super, super early, but really at the early beginnings of Ethereum. And um, although I had invested in Bitcoin before, I was not totally involved in the space. And, you know, coming into understanding how dramatic of a change that this technology brings into how we interact, um, how we do business, how we create value is something that really sparked my interest. And it's really exciting to see, you know, five to six years later, how, the, how all that has come to fruition. Um, we've seen it accelerating with uh, the NFT space, which, you know, really has reached broad stream, you know, mainstream adoption, you know, not that, you know, it's not everyone ha owns an NFT, but at least, you know, we we went from the developer only audience to the consumer at large. And I see everyone is, is seeing the added value of this technology and is starting to benefit from it, to be self-empowered, to be able to um, uh, receive additional yields, to create value, whether you're, you know, a developer or whether you're, you know, someone um, who's in, uh, regardless of where they're located, uh, that can have access to this. And this is really unique and really exciting for me. I think it's extremely important, the work you are doing, because for example, that within the last year, right, um, I definitely know and I can see it from the people around me as well. Even those people are not super diving deep into the world of blockchain. NFT really, truly skyrocketed the amount of people who knows and care about blockchain, right? So I think what you are doing and what CoinFund is doing is extremely important for the whole ecosystem. Um, with that said, what made you join this company, and what made you do? Uh, what made you get into blockchain in the first place? So, um, regarding Coin Fund, so uh, it, it's interesting. It's all about the people, right? Absolutely. So, I'll tell you when I joined Consensus, and I'll tell you when I joined Coin Fund because um, they're not the same story, but in a in a way, it's um, sort of a deep connection and an understanding of of the people and the value of the, the firm that they're they're creating. So when I met um, Joe, I was fundraising for another project um, and consensus. So I was not at all uh, thinking of joining, you know, a Web3 company. I was raising uh, for my own company, which was a robo-advisor. Um, and when uh, my co-founder told me that we should speak to Joe, I thought this was not maybe not very relevant. But um, when I met um, Joe and the team, I thought, you know, what they're doing is so amazing. And the conviction that they have into building this and building this future is so incredible that I was totally, you know, brought into it. And I jumped ship immediately and joined the, the team and my co-founder too. 
And um, <clears throat> when I um, when I joined Coin Fund, um, it was a little bit the same thing. I had known Jake for um, a long time in the space. Uh, we were both early in the NFT uh, space, so we shared that passion for creators and um, and what this technology could do for them. And then you know the opportunity came up. Um, and I had never thought of leaving consensus, but you know, when Jake spoke to me about what he was doing and what he was looking for, I thought I was I could be a good fit for for that role, and and that's how I jumped ship, you know, very very uh, quickly too. So, wow, that's incredible. So just to pinpoint roughly a time because consensus was funded in October 2014, right? And when you uh, just now you mentioned when you met Joe was summer 2014 around that time or so it was a little bit later um okay. and there was already you know maybe 20 or 30 people in the that's right until they decentralized um Absolutely. a few people in brooklyn um you know uh, the inferior team was gearing up uh some of some of the earlier teams that are very successful now were were already you know uh beginning and so it was not in 2014 i think it was 2015 or 16 even 2015 and 2016 is still incredible early for um for being a key player in the in the system i i personally joined uh, participate in 2017 um started hosting blockchain community uh, meetups with my nice. mentor and with my friends and um and i think super super even personally as well super super important for me that i still do what i do is because this industry has changed my life not only totally blew my mind about what this technology could do but also i genuinely met some of my best friends that we still talk every single day from the blockchain meetups so yeah, yeah the blockchain meetups at the beginning were really um such an incredible place to meet people early adopters um early founders um you know that um Michael Roller ran the Ethereum meetup, and there were so many meetups, um, um, you know, around the city. And actually, um, I discovered Bitcoin thanks to a meetup. I um, I was at the NYC Tech meetup, um, and then I think Nick Zavos was presenting and was talking about, you know, the the Bitcoin um, Center or the Bitcoin. Um, I don't remember what's the name of the organization that was downtown and it was the first time i heard about it and i thought wait i have to check it out because i used to work at the new york stock exchange it was literally almost in the same street so i thought it was super interesting to um to go there so i think um as the new york tech scene was maturing the meetups played a, a key role there so vanessa you are one of the early team member of consensus you have worked at um new york stock exchange and now you are at coin Fund. your career path is just absolutely inspiring and incredible with that said do you have any advice for young people and minorities on how to start a career in blockchain yes so you know you have to the, the easy path um i would say is really um, going the technical route. If you're a developer and you learn the languages that the large, you know, layer ones of, are building in, whether it's Flow, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Solana or Near, um, I think there's tons of opportunities uh, for you to learn and grow. So, um, you know, you can, uh, if if you have to choose your university curriculum. You know, you can choose math uh, or computer science, uh, et cetera, which allows you to build the foundations uh, if you have that opportunity. Um, if you're more of a business person, it's also very easy to engage because this community is so open um, and all the information is available online. It's quite incredible. There's, you know, everything is public. So if you want to learn and grow, you can. There's a, there's a lot of um, tools um, that allows to you to self empower, and then it's good to meet the community. So if it's available to you, go to meetups, go and meet people, understand what they're doing, understand what their needs are, 
and um, try to build your skills around that, whether you're a front-end developer, back-end developer, a marketing person, a finance person, trying to understand what is so special about Web3 and what skills you need to develop there. Uh, but I would say the, the other thing is, I said all the information is available and people are also available. Um, so you have to be in the communities of the projects. You have to join the Twitter, um, you know, follow the Twitter accounts, join the Discord, um, look at what's going on on Telegram, go to the meetups, really engage. It's, a, it's an industry where if you're very proactive, things will come to you. Um, and you're able to access all that information. I think, you know, you're, you're mentioning <coughs> either minorities or uh, people who have less access. Um, I think that this is the opportunity to have full access and be proactive and engage. So there are tons of medium, there's medium posts that really explain in details what all the projects do. There's trainings, there's videos. I mean, it's uh, it's almost too much information, but I think if you spend the time and invest the time in your education, in connecting with people and understanding what the needs are, you have huge opportunities in the space. Thank you for the detailed answer. And I personally can definitely testify what Vanessa is saying about how people are extremely accessible because I, just like us doing this podcast because I literally just reached out to you on LinkedIn uh, because I saw one of the panel you have done. And when, like you mentioned, right, when someone's making an effort and because this community is very understanding of each other, is really here to collaborate and that really leads to infinite possibilities. And also I appreciate you that you have all the knowledge and experiences in your mind and also at the same time you have the ability to convey your experiences in such simple and straightforward format so i believe that what you just said just now is going to be extremely helpful for the audience and listeners out there yeah you can dm people on twitter you can dm them on telegram you know people are responsive you know they might not have the response that you need but they're all very willing to help yes and this is an interesting question, and I'm super excited. Originally, I was going to ask this one a little bit later on, but I have this feeling that something you have mentioned throughout the conversation. Um, the question is, what is your se secret sauce or what is the one thing that made you the person you are today? And I have this vibe or this understanding that you are a very curious person and you take action. But maybe besides those two, would you mind tell us what is the one thing that made you the person you are today? I really love what you just said because it's kind of spot on. Um, you need to be curious. You need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to try to understand different perspective and um, see where people come from. Um, and that's really important because if you're able to see where people come from, you can meet them halfway and you can understand whether their concerns or what their uh, what drives them <coughs> and how you can help them. And so I think it's um, it's really important to be curious, to um, make sure that you're not self limiting. Um, so let's say, oh, I'm not a developer, so why should I read this white paper or, you know, why should I you know go into something where I'm not going to be the specialist? It doesn't matter because things are moving so, so quickly and innovation is um, constantly challenging the status quo. And so if you have that ability to challenge the status quo and understand you know, why things are the way they are and how they can be better and think conceptually about it, um, I think you can, um, you're able to see ahead uh, and then take action. So, of course, being action oriented is super important and you need to move quick in this in this uh, space. Things move very, very quickly. Time is of the essence. Competition is high. Um, you know, even though some projects take a long time to come to fruition, like the pace at which people work is really, really impressive. And so um, my secret sauce, I would say, is that 
I'm very active. I can do a lot of things <laughs> and, and drive a lot of things forward. Um, even if I'm not the specialist, even if, you know, people don't want to change or don't want to move forward, you know, I try to help them along and, and, and get going. So with that said, a follow-up question would be, because I'm extremely curious as well, you mentioned that you have the ability to drive forward maybe a few things or a few projects at the same time. When you are doing that, how do you manage your time? Because I would assume that you have meetings all day long and also at the same time, you try to spend a decent amount of time to read uh, or catch up with uh, the latest update with the industry. Right. I would imagine that you also say no a lot. Or... Yeah, so time management is key. And you have to focus on, um, you have to understand how you spend your time. You have to, there's a very simple thing that you can do as, as an individual uh, working in a company or being an entrepreneur. Look at your calendar, look at all your meetings and say, you know, are the meetings that I have in my calendar you know, focused 100% of what I, on what I want to achieve. Are there things I could pass on to someone else? Are there things that I don't need to be involved in? Um, a lot of the, you know, entrepreneurs like want to be involved in everything, right? You know, when you're building your company, you want to manage everything, but you have to learn how to delegate because that saves up your time to be creative, to be a leader, and to really drive forward things. And so you really, like time management is so critical um, in anyone's life. And once you, you see that, and sometimes, you know, people will look at their calendar and say, I'm spending half of my time in things. Do I really need to be there? I'm, am I just listening? Can I get the information, you know, in another way? Um, can I just get a recap of the meeting? Things like that. And I think if you're able to do that, that's you know ninety percent of the things of the things that you're you'll be able to achieve well because your focus is a hundred percent on what you need to achieve. So if you need to achieve three things, you know how to divide your day, your time between these three things. And then if one thing is more important, then you'll have like fifty percent of your time on that thing and twenty five percent on the two others. But like really like having that clarity is super important. And I cannot agree more with what you said. And while you're saying that, something came to my mind um, related to comments that Steve Jobs have made before. One thing is that I believe that he mentioned that his main focus within Apple is actually orchestration, which means that he put together the team and he doesn't do everything himself but and i believe this is his quote he said i hire talented people and then i get out of their way for them to do what they do best exactly right sure. well, that's, um, that's what founders need to do um when they they create their teams when they think about how they're going to hire who they're going to hire you know um, how each person's skills complements each other I think that's super important because you do want diversity in your teams. You want diversity of perspective. You want diversity of talent. Um, and um, so that's one way of, of effectively delegating. And on the topic of the team, that leads to the part two of the podcast, which is Coin Fund, Coin Telegraph, Business Wire, and Coin Desk. And many other media outlets wrote Coin Fund targets early mainstream adoption with 83 million venture funds. And the first question: Do you all have a preference for certain types of projects? So um, we have this uh, VC fund which closed before before I joined, but was announced after. Um, and so we target very early stage companies, so pre seed, seed up to Series A. Um, it's really in our DNA to come in very early with the entrepreneurs um, and help them grow and scale and help them um, achieve product market fit um, because as more and more projects are coming into the space, you know, some areas are more crowded than others. And so you really need to achieve that product market fit and then execute um, super quickly. 
And um, so we invest across several themes. We invest, we invest in NFT projects, we invest in DeFi, we still invest um, in um, early layer one or layer twos. Uh, we invest in uh, resource networks um, and identity um, and all the infrastructure that is needed for Web3 to be built. So follow-up question with that, um, I actually have a few of them. How about gaming? How about something like um, exchange, things like that? So we're pretty excited about gaming and the metaverse. Uh, we really think it's coming together, you know, the confluence of Web2 and Web3 um, is is coming uh, and gaming is a big part of that. Um, NFTs allow you to um, interact with the games across different games and um, and we're seeing projects of decentralized gaming that are pretty exciting and also infrastructure uh, of gaming. So we invest in something called um, um, gaming community, uh, which is helps people organize tournaments uh, with Web3 tools. And so we're really excited about that space. And we have one, one analyst who's particularly excited about the space, who's also a gamer himself. Um, so that's really nice. In the exchange world, we've invested in a few exchanges, um, some in uh, India and Singapore. Uh, we also invested in uh, uh, Ledger X, um, and we're looking at other exchanges. So we also invest in sort of the more the CFI. Uh, aspect of the business, not just uh, DeFi. Um, and we believe there's going to be a convergence between the two. Yes, I believe so, because as I think in the business world, in all different kind of industry that crypto or money or fund is resources. And when you all have these resources, your hand is extremely important to have this vision about what kind of, which is the question I asked at the beginning of the podcast, what, what's your vision for the world, right? Because what you are doing is putting these resources and investing in this company and then later on, this company will most likely shape the world or the industry towards different and interesting and beautiful directions, which I believe um, it's very, very important for uh, the whole industry to thrive. So with that said, um, <laughs> if a project is currently in the idea stage, would uh, CoinFund still accept it if it's a right fit or? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, we really want to help. Um, there are some projects where we came in even before the raise and we try to help the entrepreneurs like sort of prepare for the raise. So yes, if um, if you have uh, one or two co-founders and a few technical teams working on the project or you just want a hackathon, um, that is something that we would look at for sure. And this is what I think the amazing thing about uh, CoinFund and Vanessa, what you're doing is not only just invest the resources into a company and leave them alone, let them do their thing, but like take them under your wing to really spend time and help them strategically and in all different aspects. So uh, definitely a big shout out to you and what you are doing. Um, yeah, this, we, I believe yeah. I have found. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Sorry, yeah, we help them across um, across several dimensions, whether it's you know their strategy, their go to market, their technical roadmap. Um, we also are engaged in um, governance. Uh, we look at token economics. We look at hiring, which is a real pain point right now in the space, uh, and marketing. Um, and then, so across all these dimensions, we try to um, support the entrepreneurs um, because you're not the specialist of everything. It's something that you you need to learn. Um, so it's it's important to get different perspectives on on those different topics. Definitely want to ask you a question about the jobs in the crypto market, but before, want to emphasize go-to market strategy is actually extremely important. It's not what some people would think they just hire a community manager or they just do marketing, then that's it. But it's way more detailed than that. It has so much things into consideration. So do you mind briefly, briefly touch base on that? Yeah, so you know you have a vision um, a, as an entrepreneur or founder, and the question is like, how do you make this vision a reality, right? 
how do you drive market adoption of your product? And you know, by that in Web3, I'm not talking about like how many products you're gonna sell, but how you know how many developers you're gonna get working on your platform, how many projects, if it's you know, protocol are gonna build on your platform, how are you gonna create value? So um, very different from the web two perspective. But the principles of market fit are still something that that are the same. It's a product or a protocol that people are excited about that you know um, that cater to their needs or solve their problems. And then uh, once you understand that and you get the feedback from your community or your clients, you're able to drive the features that are necessary for the mainstream adoption of your product. And so it's really important to not build a product in a vacuum with just your vision, but really to engage with the community, not just to for them to build, but to get feedback on that product. And we've had you know, teams do that very, very successfully. And it takes time and um, it's it's a methodology. Like, you know, if you have a product manager, you know, he knows how to see across the product, the engagement with clients, and what the, the how the product would uh, be created. Sometimes, you know, I think it's like you build it and they come, but it's not. It's uh, less and less true as there's a lot of people in the space. Personally speaking, because I have my own company as well, and truly the painful experience is that almost all of the founders and CEO they have this extremely biased about they think their product or what they're doing is the best. And I can totally understand that, whether it's ego or it's attachment or this. I mean, think about if you're a parent, if uh, other people saying that your baby's ugly, no one wants to hear that, right? So I um, totally understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, on uh, jobs.coinfund.io, there are 461 jobs by 54 companies. And I think it's incredible that coin funds are doing. Would you uh, explain and tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So the jobs board, and we're updating it right now. So we're adding more companies. Um, the jobs board really like, pulls the data from all our companies and sort of uh, allows you to scroll all the roles that are open in these companies. And there are two things you can do. You can apply directly. Or you can contact me and say, hey, I'm super interested in working for this and this company, or hey, this is my profile. Do you think I could be a good fit for one of those companies? Um, just do the work and looking at the open positions, but like, I'm happy to help anyone who, who wants to join. And um, it gives you also a very good idea. You were asking about students and how they could get in into the space. Um, if you look at all these jobs, you'll understand like what are the main uh, areas for demand, right? Uh, in terms of, of jobs in Web3. Those people who are listening right now, a lot of them are probably founders themselves. So let's say if a project or a few projects or maybe many, many projects want to list their uh, job opportunities on CoinFund, what would they need to do? So we only put the companies we invest in. So okay. that's why people can contact me because I work closely with the founders and I know what they're hiring needs are. Um, so this is only our portfolio companies. Uh, but if you have ideas to create a job board, uh, I'm happy to participate. <laughs> Absolutely. And I strongly recommend everybody to check out jobs.coinfund.io. Um, there are amazing companies that, yeah, it says on the website, can discover the next chapter of your career at a CoinFund portfolio company. And Amazing. Strongly recommend everybody to check yeah, out. And whether you're already in blockchain or you're trying to break into blockchain, I think it's worth taking a look. Absolutely. So everybody, stop this podcast right now. Pause. Come back later and go check it out first. Do it. Do it, everybody. <laughs> Part three, advices. Besides when we're having a conversation, the marketing and PR agency I have mentioned, me and my team are also producing an event series focusing on youth education and blockchain technology. And my personal interest here is to build something meaningful with my time here on Earth. Uh, in this specific case of the event series, what strategic initiatives and alliances would you build if you were me? 
if you wanted, so I would focus on, of course, engaging very early with audiences. Um, so whether it's college or even, you know, high school. Um, I think that's that's an amazing way to engage. So those those are some of the strategic um, uh, partnerships that I would target. Um, there are also um, sort of if you're if you're looking for you know targeting youth. Um, so I think that's that's a great way to help in Florida. There are also a lot of associations that help uh, form developers very early on. And also some that are focused on um, on minorities um, and so like Black Girls Code, etc. And so I think you know targeting these types of partnership could help you uh, be very successful because you're you know sort of moving the needle there. And um, also I would target you know um, general education or early education in Web two, uh, whether it's front end or back end. To bring them to understand, you know, blockchain and and the resources that they can leverage to um, to understand it more. I Absolutely. tell you something like the the uh, remunerations in the space are you know up the roof if you're a developer um, or other um, person that has subject matter expertise in the space. So I would you know encourage anyone who wants to start their career to really look into this. Personally speaking, me getting into this industry every day, I'm learning something new. And the fun part about it is even sometimes you're investing your time uh, or energy or resources into something, you don't even know what the return it might be in that moment when you uh, invest in it. Um, I think that's very interesting. I enjoy, I'm an outgoing person, I enjoy going to events, I enjoy talking to people about dreams, about ideas, about what their vision is. And I believe, deep in my heart or in my soul, I just know that uh, strategic partnership, and that would be something I'm extremely good at. I'm already, I would say decent, but compared to you, obviously, I'm a total newbie. So with that said, what would you um, give advice or on someone who knows a lot of people and outgoing in person? So how to do more strategic partnerships? Yes. So I think, remember when we spoke about how you focus your time, I think you need to focus um, the same thing with strategic partnerships. So you can't be wasting your time with any types of partners because then you're gonna end up in conversations that are not uh, relevant. So the way that you focus to, you know, you get the, the best for your buck in terms of your time commitment and your engagement with them is really understanding what those partners need. Because if you're coming with them with, with something that they don't need or that is relevant, you're just, you know, they're gonna take a conversation, but it's gonna be irrelevant. So you need to, one, understanding what their needs are and then offering something that meets those needs or makes it easy for them to meet those needs. And, um, you know, partnerships are win-win. It's not, it's never just one-sided and it's very important that when you offer something, you get something in return and that you're um, offering something of value. So you'll get something of value in return and you can assess that. And then, so focusing on those high value partnerships and spending time on them is really the key to success. Absolutely. because. Every relationship needs uh, investment, and whether it's romantic relationship or business professional relationship as well. So with that said, besides amazing early stage projects, what else does CoinFund need? Just in case some audience out there want to contribute and providing value for you all. So, um, you know, any founder that's out there who wants to to create a company and, and is looking for funding and help, you know, we're happy to engage. Um, we're also looking for talents that we spoke about. So, you know, um, I want the portfolio companies to get the best talent um, in order for them to thrive. Um, and, you know, we're helping uh, people transition to Web3, but then also helping entrepreneurs understand how they can bring in people who are not Web3 natives into their organization. Maybe they need a little bit more time to adjust, but they, they have transferable skills that they can 
they can bring in. Um, we're uh, always looking for, you know, crypto enthusiasts to engage with and understand, you know, different perspectives. Um, and I'm always interested in um, conversation about where the industry is going. Um, I'm also interested about how we can make it a more diverse and inclusive um, industry. So love to engage on that and help initiatives in that in that way. Um, we have the opportunity to do that early on in the industry and bringing early uh, diverse talent in the industry. So, you know, uh, trying to move the needle also there. So with that said, what would you recommend the listeners such as founders and the industry in general to do to encourage the diversity and inclusion? So I think there's a few things. I think it's getting more diverse talent through the education pipeline. Um, so whether it's sponsoring um, some um, some programs with universities or scholarships, I think that would be very powerful. Um, education, of course, is is the key. So whether it's university or outside the university, um, having more uh, diverse talent, having access to those programs for you know for free or, or others, I think that would be super interesting creating networks of um of diversity and, and where people can talk about these issues and support each other and i'm just i'm not talking just about a woman's group um or things like that i think it's important to embrace all types of diversity um together so that it's not just like it doesn't feel siloed in terms of groups um and and people can engage in, and understand you know, what diversity brings to the table that's incredible. I think it's super, super important that the future we're building includes everybody. Um, that should always be the case and that should always be the goal. With that said, as a strategy executive at New York Stock Exchange, you are also a founding board member of AABC focused on blockchain and art. Would you mind briefly tell us about what AABC up to? And um... <laughs> sure. So ABC focuses on antiquities and and and, um, and blockchain. Um, there's issues uh, in the antiquities world where there's a lot of either looted antiquities um, pieces that you know have been stolen and resold and sort of can't get into the market because of its unproven provenance. And there's a lot. There's a lot of them. And um, there's also issues around repatriation of art um, that has been stolen. Um, and so it's, it was an interesting um, association for me to get involved with because if we're able to create shared ownership, uh, stewardship of these objects, which belong to the world, but also belongs to nations or groups in specific nations that could get the economic benefits from, even though, you know, the objects are not in the country. There's, um, I think there's innovative ways um, that we can think about um, how to um, have humanity benefit from, from these amazing pieces of our history and, and of our shared history. Um, you know, if they're still, if they had been stolen during a war, it is still a history. And I, I think we should embrace that history uh, and make sure that we are able to put it to light and not um, not hide it, um, and be able for you know people who have been spoiled to benefit from these um, goods. Well, personally, I don't. I enjoy definitely enjoy my time in museums, but I'm no art expert. <laughs> so, um, but I think art is important, um, and art really carries out energy and ideology, and it's. Yes, yeah, like what people believe in, how people feel, and important, important part of everybody's life, just like technology. So we have covered DeFi, we have mentioned NFT, we have mentioned Metaverse, and later on. Where do you see the future of the blockchain industry is going within the next year? So I think we'll see more and more mainstream adoption. Um, so really... Uh, the convergence of CFI and DeFi, access mm -hmm. for large institutions and consumers to DeFi returns, 
simplification of UX UI, <laughs> which is um, difficult in order to bridge that gap and bridging the gap between Web 2 and Web 3. And so understanding how this new economy um, can benefit directly to the consumer and engage directly to the consumer. And so I think we'll see a lot of movements in that. Absolutely. And literally 24 hours ago, prior to the recording date, uh, Visa bought an NFT. And I just think it's, it's incredible, right? It's different waves of people are caring more about this technology from the last 12 months or so, the NFT waves of the artists, the musicians start caring more. And lately as well, you know, Michael Seller get on a hundred podcasts and talk about uh, his strategy and think is finally the things, the visions that everybody have been dreaming about, which is mass adoption is really coming along. And I think for everybody in this industry, it's more important than ever for us to do our job right and with high integrity, because I believe really everybody carry the reputation of this industry, right? Yes. Part four, the end. <laughs> um, my favorite question, one of, I love all the questions. What roles do love and connection play in your life, Vanessa? So um, I think obviously it's very important. Um, you know, we all work long hours and we need to spend time with our families and friends and we need to connect and um, not get caught up in the day to day. Um, I mean, I say this, I probably work 27 hours a day, uh, but I still try to find time um, to um, ensure that the deep connection and relationships that I have are met and are kept uh, very uh, special and, um, and deep. And I think- So that, how do you go about doing that? Yeah. So, Sorry. yeah, no problem. And, and I think, you know, it's, um, you sometimes in life, you have to take back, take a step back and say, okay, what's, what's important for me? Uh, what am I passionate about? And how um, do I engage with people in, in a way that is meaningful, right? Whether it's your friends, your family, your husband, your wife, um, how do I make, again, the time that I spend with uh, that person or this, this group of persons meaningful and engaging? And so it's also an effort from your part um, to ensure that you're listening um, and that you are connecting in a way that is, um, you know, beyond the, super, the superficial um, ways of connecting. And I think, again, you know, how you spend your time doing that is important. And it's for each and every one of us to assess what is the right um, amount of time and energy that you want to dedicate to it. Absolutely. And I found alignment with Vanessa, what you just mentioned now with uh, the editor in chief of Coin Telegraph, Christina. Um, she was also on the podcast. She mentioned that, similar to you, you'll probably work 27 hours a day, right? Even she's extremely busy, she still makes time for herself to do what she enjoys, which is she dances nearly every day or many times a day or many times a week. There's always work, but she will dedicate the time that, for example, let's say at dinner, we're going out and I'm not going to look at my phone. So do you have similar practice? For example, you block out time for spiritual practice or yes. with uh, so your I loved think, ones? Um, yeah. So I think self-care, as you know, you mentioned with Christina, is, is super important. Um, if you want to be able to connect with others, uh, you need to connect with yourself first and you need to ensure that you're treating yourself well. So whether it's your health, uh, whether it's, you know, entertainment, like she said, like doing things that you enjoy, you don't need to do them all day long. But if you take the time, and make the time to do that, um, you'll be able then to be totally present for others. 
And so I think, you know, connection is with others starts with connection with yourself. Absolutely. I think the quote is from the book Kabbalion or somewhere. It says, as within, so without. And yes, I totally agree with what you said. And it's extremely important to me. I personally meditate three times a day. Even when I'm super, super busy, I still manage like 10 minutes. And if I have a ton of time, which will be a totally luxury, I will be sit down in the afternoon for one hour. And it's just incredible me time. And it's been such a deep part of my life now. Yeah. There's, a, there's also a book called The Power of Habit. Um, if you read it, you know, you're able to self-reflect on what are you doing as a habit that serves you or doesn't serve you. And if you're able to take a step back and analyze your behavior and see, you know, if you're doing things consciously or you're just doing things by pure habit, um, then if you step into the consciousness, you'll see that it's much more fulfilling than just doing things automatically. And sometimes you don't real even realize that you're doing them. Um, and you have the power within you to change those habits. And so that book is really, is really great in that way that it really shows how much we are empowered to lead our lives and shape our lives and manage any disruption that comes your way, right? So I think it's, it's, very, um, it's a very interesting book to see how much you can do rather than uh, be passive uh, with your habits or you know just the way that things are. Thank you for that, Vanessa. And I have to follow up by asking, what is your most important habit? So I'm very focused on health. Um, I, you know, I have like a health routine. I'm, I'm very focused on what I eat, you know, how I engage with, um, with my time and my sleep and things like that. So for me, that's really important. Um, I'm, not, you know, I'm a little bit of a, a health freak, but I, I think it's, it, it really helps you um, um, sort of uh, have the long-term Keep your head vision. clear, right? Keep your head clear, uh, have the long-term vision of where you wanna be, and also making sure that physically and mentally you are able to be there um, and to be there for the long term, right? Um, so, you know, you don't want to be at like, you know, 70 and not be able to um, continue to enjoy life. So I think that's, that's a, a number one focus for me. Absolutely, because a healthy body is extremely important for a healthy mind and for someone to be productive. With that said, Vanessa, I believe and i know for a fact that you are not only extremely intelligent but also you are extremely wise as well would you mind briefly explain your decision making process or probably or problem solving approach um thanks for saying that i'm very wise um i don't know if all my colleagues would agree uh but uh, <laughs> um i think um in terms of decision making, um, I like to make decisions quick, but I like to make uh, informed decision. Um, it's very troublesome for me when people just go with the first solution that they find because it's convenient or because they know the person or because um, they don't have time to do the work. And so although I like to move fast, I think there's nothing worse than an uninformed decision um, that you have to play catch up with after. So being able to assess things with as much objectivity as possible. I mean, we're all subjective beings, so sometimes it's difficult and it also plays into the investment process. Um, but like you know, trying to uh, force yourself um, to have these objective criteria for decision making, um, in my view, is super important. Yes, it's always take hiring somebody as an example. It's always hiring someone slowly, then to hire someone fast, and you have to fire them afterwards. It's just the perfect yeah, example. Don't don't move too slow uh, in hiring people. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, neither. Because it's I think yeah that what you just said just the perfect example, right? Because there needs to be a perfect balance, and 
there are guidelines for many things in general, but it still depends on each special cases, right? Mm, with that said, do you have um, a book recommendation? Uh, for example, a book that you have read lately or a website or a blog you usually enjoy go to um, at the end of the podcast to we'll leave it to our audiences? Yeah, so I like Laura Shin's podcast. Um, I just, I really like her perspective. I like the diversity of, of the people she brings in and the diversity of topics that um, that she looks after. Um, in terms of books, um, I read a very boring book on quantitative strategies for, uh, for trading. Um, so uh, more on the advancement of, of AI in that, in that space. So I like to read things that are not always, you know, uh, related to my work um, or, or more like sci-fi books, et cetera. Um, I think that cross pollination of different ideas are extremely important to train our connection between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And they said that they cut Albert Einstein's brain eight hours after his death. And that's one thing they discovered because his left brain and right brain is way more con in a simple way, way more connected than other normal individuals. Yeah. So I think it, it brings, um, it brings me to think about, you know, what, what makes people creative and innovative, uh, in that sense. And I think having that diversity of perspective and understanding, uh, totally different, you know, subject matter, uh, subject matters and, and perspective is really important because it does foster creativity and it, it can be creativity in your work and it can be creativity in your, your life. It can be creativity in problem solving. Uh, but making you, making you think out of the box, I think, is is super important. Absolutely. So, with that said, one last question, Vanessa, do you have a call to action for something you're extremely passionate about, something you believe in, or it could be for Coin Fund as well, or a few call to action for our audience out there? Um, a few. So, I'm also the president of the Blockchain for Social Impact, and we're doing a hackathon on NFTs and social impact in October. So, pretty excited about that. So, if you want to participate as a developer um, or as a mentor, if you want to sponsor, um, you know, please contact me. Uh, I think we'll be we'll be putting out the information soon. Um, so that I'm pretty passionate about. Um, I really think that you know, thinking having the perspective of social impact into baked into your projects and what you do and the implications of what you're doing is, is super important. Um, then, you know, if you want to move to Web3 and want to work for one of our companies, um, contact me. If you're an entrepreneur that's looking for funding, um, contact us if you want to, um, you know, um, have a chat about the future of Web3, contact me too. <laughs> Amazing. So with that said, the call to action cannot be any more clear. Everybody that's listening strongly encourage y'all to follow Vanessa's lead and go check out because she and her team are a group of extremely dedicated individuals and professionals are doing something great, meaningful impact and social impact to our entire ecosystem. The future we're building here is really a future that everybody is part of. I just want to say thank you so, so much, Vanessa. I actually have a ton of more questions. It would be such an honor to have you back here very soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Talk thank soon. You.